Hey, welcome to part 12 of my procedural node series in Blender. Today I'm going to show you how to create this log texture here. And this went through several different versions, but I feel like this is the best one I made. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. Okay, so to start out with, let's actually delete our default cube here and bring in a cylinder. Let's go Z or SZ.1, and that size is it on the Z axis by... Uh, it basically divides it by 10 and then let's go ahead and apply that scale by hitting control A and clicking on scale. I'm going to enable smooth shading and then come over here to the modifiers tab and I'm going to add a bevel modifier and change this to 0 0.02 for the offset. Segments I'm going to put to 3 and then let's go down here and change it to angle. And I, that'll get rid of these lines with the individual faces along the edge of my object just like that. Let's then add one more modifier, which is the subdivision surface modifier. We'll just leave these settings as the default settings. Then I'm going to split my screen and open up the shader editor on the left. Hit N to get rid of that shelf. And then let's add a new material. Let's call this stump, just like that. So I'm going to go into top mode and just go into rendered mode so we can see what's going on. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a circle to help me with those tree rings. So if you watched an earlier video of mine where I animated eyes, you might already know how I'm going to do this. With the texture coordinate node, let's bring in a separate XYZ node and plug object into vector. Let's bring in a math node here, change this to power, change that bottom value to 2, and plug the X into that top value. Let's duplicate that bring Y into the bottom there. Duplicate this one here, change it to add, and we're going to add both of these together, and then duplicate it one more time, and we're going to change this to square root. Let's see what that looks like. It's basically a circle, but uh, there's a, a very large gradient. You know, there's no sharp lines, and it's quite small. This next step, we're going to distort this a little bit. Let's move this back and bring in a noise texture, and just place it on the line right after there. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm not going to really change too much here yet. We'll just leave it as is. And uh, let's actually distort this along the vector line. So what that means is I'm going to duplicate this noise texture and just bring it right after that texture coordinate there. And then I'm going to bring in a mix RGB and place it right here and plug the object into color 2. And now we have this controller for how much this uh, distorts everything there. And you can see it's kind of moving into the bottom left as well. We'll have to cor correct that as well, but for now let's set this mix to 0.925, just like that. So to correct this imbalance here where it's not perfectly center anymore, I'm actually going to duplicate this mix here and uh, change this mix to subtract, and then change this to 0 0.075, just like this. And now it's kind of in the center there. Uh, that's good enough for me now. I'm just going to leave that. And then come over here to the second noise texture, and change this distortion to 8. And you can see we get a lot more rings now. I want to bring in a color ramp here and just change these values to black and white and adjust them a little bit as well. We're going to adjust this bottom black value to 0.39 and this top white value to 0.72, just like that. Next up, I want to create some imperfections in the middle here. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and use actually a technique that Ducky3D uses for scratches in concrete. And the way he does that is he brings in a Voronoi texture and let's just set this at Minkowski and F1 and duplicate this and set this bottom one to F2. Then we're going to go ahead and bring in a mix RGB node, set this to subtract and plug in these two guys here, the distance to color 1 on the F1 and the distance on the F2 to color 2. And then let's set this factor to 0.25, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and click on this top Voronoi texture and hit Control T, and that brings up my texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And let's plug the vector into the other vector there for the other Voronoi. And then for uh, this vector line here as well, let's take a look at that first. For this vector line here, we're actually going to distort this with another noise texture here. So I'm going to pop this here, make sure it's coming out of object as well. Let's go ahead and bring in a mix RGB so we can control that distortion. Plug the object into color 2. Let's change this factor to 0.8. Let's 
Let's come over here to the Voronoi textures. Let's change both these scales to one, just like that. So then I thought, I kind of want to control this texture here so that it's more concentrated into the middle. So what I did is I brought in a gradient texture. I'm going to hit Control T to make sure it's coming out of object. Let's see what that looks like. So right now it's linear. It's just a line going down to the middle. But if I change this to spherical, it becomes a spherical gradient there for my object. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for this bottom texture here with a mix RGB. Let's try and clear this up a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. Move this down here. And uh, with this mix here, I'm going to plug this sphere spherical gradient right into the factor, just like this. And then this bottom subtract RGB is going to plug into color 2, just like that. Let's see what that looks like. So far, not too much. This middle color, I'm just going to leave it as gray. If we turn this down, you can see it kind of encroaches a little bit, but not by much. I'm just going to leave it in the middle. That looks pretty good so far. So let's bring in a color ramp here to control this right here. I'm going to go ahead and set the black value to 0.5, just like this. And this white value, let's set this to 0.81, just like that. Now we're left with this texture here. Um, I kind of want this part in the middle here. So to do that, I came over here to this mapping uh, node here. I'm going to change this x value to negative 0.35, just like this, and this y value to negative 0.05, just like that. And it's pretty much in the center. You could do a bit more. Maybe let's go a little bit further over. Why don't we do 0.37? That looks great. So now let's go ahead and mix these two textures here. We've got this top one with the rings, and then we've got this one here with the kind of the imperfections in the middle and uh, just some interesting patterns going on there. So I'm just going to drag this across, hit Control Shift, right click and drag that across to both nodes. And then with this mix, let's open it up and let's just adjust this slightly so that we can tweak the settings. Why don't we set this at, uh, why don't we try 0.3? Okay, looks good so far. Yeah, next thing I wanted to do is just create more imperfections here, just more coming out of the center there, like you see on some old tree stumps. And uh, I've actually run a lot of different experiments here, and I was able to look through some of the, uh, the ones that I've done and see a result similar to what I wanted. So uh, let's take a look at how I did that. I brought in a Musgrave texture, and uh, let's set these settings to multifractal and then let's change the top one to 13.8 then 16 then 1 then 1.1 1 .1. let's just see what that looks like here really quick not like too much yet but uh, we're gonna modify it a little bit let's hit control T and bring up the mapping node and texture coordinate node and we're going to bring in a noise texture and pop it right here make sure this is coming out of object and then let's bring in our mix RGB. And let's plug object into color 2 as well, just like that. Let's set this mix to 0.7. And let's change this scale to 1. And then leave everything else the same. And that's starting to look pretty good. Um, it's this kind of radiating, or radiating from the center pattern that I wanted. It's not quite in the middle, though, so I'm going to use this mapping node to correct that. Let's go ahead and set this to negative 0.2 for the X and negative 0.2 for the Y. And that's looking pretty close to the center. Uh, I might change it later, but that's looking pretty good so far. Then let's come over here and do the same thing we did to the top pattern. We're going to influence this with a spherical gradient again. So I'm going to go ahead, bring in a gradient, put it here, hit Control T on this guy and change this to spherical. And let's go ahead and mix these two together, but I'm going to change this, plug this into the factor, just like this. And leave that guy plugged to the bottom there still. Let's see what that looks like. Make sure this is set to object as well. And I'm going to change this color to black. Let's also set up a color ramp right after that Musgrave texture, just to uh, 
customize this a little bit more. And we're going to change the black value to 0.14 and this white value we're going to drag down to 0.3 just like that. So now we can see these specs here. There's not too many of them. I didn't want it to take over the image so that looks pretty good there. So next up let's mix these two patterns together. We've got the rings with the little imperfections on it shown here and then we've got this Musgrave pattern shown here. So I'm going to drag this across. Let's open up this mix and set this mix to 0 0.6 just like that. Okay, we're getting pretty close to being done here. I'm going to go ahead and set up the color and bring in a color ramp to do that. Let's place this on the line just after that last mix share that we made. And we're going to bring in an additional four points here. So this uh, bottom black level, let's move this up a little bit to 0.36. And this white, let's move this down to 0.83, just like that. Whoops. Didn't grab the right one there. Make sure we grab the white one. 0.83, just like that. And we're going to put an additional four points in the middle here. So this first one, let's put at 0.45. This next one, we'll put at. Oops. This next one, we'll put at 0.54. This next one, we'll put at 0.6. And this last one, we'll put it 0.74, just like that. Then let's go ahead and come in here. This first value is going to be black, and this last value is going to be black as well. Let's set that, just drag it down. And then this uh, second color, let's change this to kind of just a slightly beige color, like this here. That looks pretty good. This third color, let's set this to black as well. This fourth color, Let's set this to dark brown. So maybe something like this here. And then this last color here, we're just going to set this to brown. So why don't I go ahead and take a sample of this guy here and just turn up the uh, brightness. Maybe that looks a little saturated. Bring it in here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and bring in our principled BSDF here again and plug color into color just like this. So this doesn't look really the same as my initial video. I don't know why I feel like I did the exact same settings but to fix this I'm gonna just bring this black value down a little bit. Let's try it like 0.15 something like that. It looks a little bit more similar. You can tweak it around as much as you want. Um, I'm, re I'm not really sure why the settings look a little bit different there but they do. So let's leave it at 0.18. I'll just leave it there for now. And then let's go ahead and create a roughness map because this looks a little bit too shiny and I don't need to type in roughness. I actually want a color ramp just like this. So let's plug this in and take a look at this color ramp. So basically the white parts are going to be the least rough and the black parts are going to be the most rough. I think that's probably not the image we want to work with here. I'm going to turn this to white and then let's bring this value down here to a little bit of gray and we can see the roughness kind of coming in a little bit better. I think it looks pretty good. Um, let's try that out. Just plug it in. So basically nothing's really that shiny. Most things are rough, especially these knots here. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring in another color ramp here. And we're going to use this for our bump. Let's go ahead and plug this in and uh, let's see what this looks like here again. Um, I'm going to bring this black value up a little bit maybe to point two, something like that. And let's bring in a bump node and plug color into height, just like this. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit extreme at one, so I'm gonna turn this down to point one. But we can see the uh, bump information there is just trying to create a little bit of a 3D effect there for us. So let's plug this bump into the normal on our principled BSDF there. Just like that. And then let's view this again. Yeah, it's looking a lot better. This looks pretty good. But one last thing I wanted to do is actually just modify this Musgrave texture a little bit, which is all these, you know, globular areas there. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, let's go ahead and look at this texture here. I'm actually going to duplicate this noise texture and place this a little bit further down the vector line move this up 
And let's duplicate this mix as well and just place it between those noise textures here and then run the object into color 2 so we can customize this. Let's change the scale on that noise texture to 20 and let's change this factor to 0.8 just like this. So now we can see a little bit more detail in those bits there. I like the look of this a little bit better. You know, it's up to you how you want to do this, but uh, that's just what I decided to do for my final pattern. I figured out what was the difference here. After exploring my uh, node setup here, I, uh, I can come down to this mix RGB right after my Musgrave and color ramp, and I'm going to change this color one to be kind of a middle gray color here. And that looks much more similar to my original project. You can see the stuff on the edge now appearing, and uh, this side bit isn't as black and you can see more detail in there. That looks a lot more similar to my original project and I think that you should probably do that if you want the same result but feel free and change this around however you want. Thanks a lot for watching.